Hello students. I hope all of you are good. Today we are going to start with the next phylum after platyhelminths is Eskelminthes. Yeah, you have uh, confusion also that what is actually the phylum Eskelminthes. This is also known as Nemathelminths or simply you can call this is as Nematoda 2. Okay, so this is also known as Eskelminthes or nematelmids or simply we can call also as nematoda now just see the basic character first of all ascalmentis what is the term indicates so the meaning that this organism on cross section suppose this is the organism whenever you have a cross section then on that cross section it is appear to be round okay so that's why it is also known as the round worm okay so this is commonly also can called as roundworm and there are around 15,000 species are available discovered till now so yes that is about just an introduction first of all let us start with the general characters what is habit and habitat see this organism Ascalmintis helminth word is there that means it is parasite but yes this organism can be parasite also and also it can be free living okay second thing this care, this organism can be aquatic as well as it can be terrestrial also okay so on that habit and habitat what we can see that this organism if it comes to habit then it can be both parasitic as well as as well as it is also the free free living organism second thing about their habitat that this organism now is aquatic as well as as well as it is also terrestrial so this is about the first habit and habitat this characteristics second point about the symmetry so what is about the symmetry what type of symmetry is present this is bilateral symmetry see this organism have bilateral symmetry if it comes to germ layer then yes this organism have fully well developed three germinal layers outer ectoderm inner endoderm and the middle mesoderm so this organism is triploblastic okay so this organism is triploblastic what about silo do they have the true silo or false silo or they don't have silo then this organism is actually pseudo silomate okay now when we can call that yes this organism or that silom is not a true silo it is false silo okay so this organism is pseudo silomate how it actually look like see first of all if this is the outer suppose ectoderm then in the middle suppose this is the endoderm and this is the mesoderm okay suppose this is the mesoderm now this mesoderm have been developed as it is triploblastic now to see what happened to that cavity or that small pouches are there in this organism the pouches they are scattered in the whole body in between ectoderm and endoderm so just see this actually uh, cavities or that pouches they are not the true pouch okay so this is not a complete cavity these are the small small pouches they are scattered actually and the true silos should be lined by mesoderm always from all the sides but what is happening here suppose for this silo that uh, true that's very small uh, scattered pouch have one lining suppose it is lined by ectoderm sometimes it is lined by endoderm also so that's why we cannot call that this organism have developed a true silo it is pseudo silo why the silo is appeared to be the small pouches that are scattered and the silo is not lined by the mesodermal uh, layer from all the sides always so this that's why this organism is also known as pseudo silomate organism next characteristics about their level of organization level of organization is organ system already what we have seen in the phylum platyhelminths the platyhelminths have developed the organ and sometimes you can see the organ system also 
in this ascalmentis what happened they have developed now fully organ system level of organization now if it come to the segmentation do they have segmentation like in the platyhel means what you have said strobulation have appeared that means those organisms show some false segmentation in this ascalmentis do they have segments no not at all so this organism is not at all segmented if it comes to reproduction then yes for the first time this organism is dimorphic now what is dimorphic that means for the first time there appear to be completely separate male and female organism one organism is completely different male organism is different female organism is different yes so this organism is uh, dimorphic hermaphrodite organism are not at all present if it comes to fertilization then the fertilization is internal and development yes a numbers of larvae are present so they have indirect development okay now after that come to their digestive system so what is happening to the digestive tract what type of digestive tract they will have see for the first time what we are going to find they are going to have complete digestive tract complete digestive tract means they are going to have mouth they are going to have anus separately and to join it they are going to have the alimentary canal now this organism will have a complete digestive tract okay remember that this is important now come to their body form okay how does organism look like actually how does organism appear to be see this organism is slender round bodied worm like animal platyhel means we have seen these are also worms but they are flat but in this case this organism appear to be round so i will draw two species i have shown here that this organism is dimorphic dimorphic means they have sexually distinct on organisms or animals male organisms are different female organisms are different so in this case also what you can you can see that completely this organisms are separate this is the male organism and this is the female organism okay so just see male and female they are completely different now you can see you can distinct also distinguish the bit uh, this male and the female organism what are the distinction if you see this male male is short female that is longer in case of male the tail region this is the tail region that is curved but in case of female this is straighter now in case of male what you can see this is a common aperture called that is known as cloaca what is cloaca now cloaca is the common opening from where they release the gamete they release urine and fecal matter okay so from this cloaca they will release all the three things together from the same opening that is called as cloaca but what is happening in this organism we cannot call this as a cloaca why because separately they will have anus and separately they will have gonophore too okay so this organism have gonophore now in this organism here they will have 55 pairs of very small small sensory papillae sen papillae means they're just elevation where the nerve endings are present so sensory papillae are present so these are the sensory papillae or papilla so sensory papillae are present in that organism throughout the body you will see a lateral line also that means the lateral line will be like this okay so this is the organism the male and the female they are distinct from each other if it comes to the male male bear only one testis so that's why this male they are known as monarchic and in case of female the uterus the um, the external genital they are two in number they have two ovaries they will have two uterus so that's why this organism female this organism this is actually the species i'm drawing that is ascaris so this ascaris have completely separate male and female female appear to have two uterus two ovaries two external genitals so that's why the females 
Ascaris, they are also known as didelphic. Males have a single testis, that's why it is known as monarchic, and the females appear to have both the two two uh, uterus, two cervix, and uh, sorry, two uterus, two uh, uh, the cervix region as well as the external genital. So that's why it is known as the didelphic organism. Now, after that, see, in this organism, what about the mouth part? See, this mouth part actually will be a unique structure. Why? This mouth is guarded by three lips. So, this is the mouth where there are three lips. So, here this is the first, this is second, this is the third lip. Okay. Now, on this region, on the sides actually, what they have, they have the chitinous, dentical, means teeth-like structures. So these are the tough teeth-like structures, what we can call, they are actually denticulate. Not exactly teeth, but it is very hard and resembling the teeth. So that's why we can call that mouth. Here, this mouth is guarded by denticulate lips. So these are the teeth-like aperture, what we can call, these are the denticulate and here this is this the lip now just see this lip this is also going to have lots of sensory papillaries that means they are provided with lots of uh, small small sensory part that means the nerve endings are present where it is just swelling a little so that are known as papillae here you can see these papillaries are present so those papillaries are actually present in the mouth they are guarded by mouth that is on the lip so this papillaries they are either double or single okay so double or single papillaries they are present okay so suppose these are the double papillaries okay and the another one if you see suppose this is the single okay double papillae and single papillaries they are present and one thing you have to know that a specific type of sensory papillae have developed here suppose this is one sensory papillae this is single even single papillae but this one what we can call this is known as amphid and what is the function of amphid? This is actually a chemoreceptor. Now what is chemoreceptor? It can understand the chemical nature of the water or suppose the soil wherever it is present. So what is happening in case of this uh, group of organism? Uh, I have specially given in one species that is in case of Ascaris. Uh, Ascaris what happened to this Ascari species that the male and female, the two separate organisms are present, completely sexual dimorphism have seen. Second thing that this mouth part, that mouth part is guarded by three lips, one lateral and another two, they are the ventrolaterals. So just see this lips, they are on the sides, they have some teeth like apertures, what we can call, these are the denticulate structures which are chitinous and pretty much resemble with a teeth, okay. So that is the denticulate structures and also on this lips, they are going to have uh, very small, so small, small sensory structures and those sensory structures that will be the papillaries there are two types of papillaries can be found one is single papillae and double papillae so it's present single and double so this is single papillae this is a double papillae one of the single papillae it is actually uh, characterized to understand the chemical nature of the surrounding and these are known as the chemoreceptor as it is a sensory organ so it is capable of understanding the chemical nature of soil or water and specifically we have given a term what we can call it these are known as the amphids okay so yes that is about the phylum Ascalmentis. that in case of Ascalmentis, what you can see this organism is this can be parasitic also this can be free living also it can be aquatic it can be terrestrial also there is a species that is called as Rhabditis. Okay, remember this Rhabditis actually, this organism is free living organism. So this is Rhabditis, which is free living organism. 
these are the general characteristics if you see their reproduction this is di delf uh, this is dimorphic that means completely set, uh, separate uh, male separate female are present so that's why what we can call this as a dimorphic organisms different male and females are present in this type of organism what you can see they are going to have a difference first thing for the first time we have seen the word cloaca what is the meaning of cloaca cloaca means a single opening through which it releases the uh, uh, fecal matter this is the anus it performs the function of a anus it also releases the urine so it is also acting as a urethral apparatus and also it releases the gametes so in case of male the three things that will be released by a single opening what we can call this is as cloaca next one in case of female they have separate urinogenital apparatus go no for you can see and then another one another opening is there that is anus so anus is present go no for this is separately present in case of female female do not have the cloaca so these are the general characteristics of escalmentis if you see about their skin the skin is also specialized what is that the skin is going to have a very thick cuticle okay so this thick cuticle is present okay and it is going to have keratin and because of that keratin this will not get uh, digested by the host enzymatic activity beneath that they are going to have the matrix under this keratin cortex they are going to have the matrix and this matrix is going to have a very important type of protein that protein is the collagen protein so here a uh, protein layer is present so this is the protein layer so this is the matrix just beneath the cortex which is provided with the protein keratin then after that it is going to have the next membrane and what is that this is basement membrane now what is basement membrane and why it is present everything you will get whenever we will discuss the animal tissue a chapter we have that is structural organization in animals in that we will see that we have four types of tissue one of the tissue is epithelial tissue so that's why in the epithelial tissue they are uh, lined by one type of membrane non-cellular membrane what is that that is basement membrane so not now you have to know but just understand this word basement membrane is present just behind the basement membrane they are going to have a type of cells this is a tissue so this is a layer epithelial tissue so this epithelium remember one word i'm going to use for the first time that is syncytial so what is syncytial means syncytial word means this cells they're going to have more than one nucleus normally what happened one cell contain only one nucleus but what happens in this case in this type of organism this epithelium the cells epithelial cells they're going to have more than one nucleus so that's why we will call this epithelium is a syncytial epithelium okay just behind the syncytial epithelium there are a type of muscle present and what is the type of muscle here this is longitudinal muscle so this muscle is the longitudinal muscle circular muscle is not present so that longitudinal uh, muscle will help this organism to move in a longitudinal direction so yeah that is about the phylum uh, escalmentis or simply you can call this is as nematoda or roundworm that are all the general characteristics hope you have understood uh, we have to know uh, another group of organism that is the uh, one species actually ascaris their life cycle of uh, ascaris is needed you need to remember that we will see in detail the life cycle uh, in the next video hope you have understood thank you